There's an awesome old song, classic rock song, by The Who, just a brilliant British band, called Pinball Wizard. Pinball Wizard. It's referred to a wizard because this deaf, dumb, and blind kid, as the song goes, he knows how to play pin, he sure knows how to play pinball. And what I'm trying to get at is that there are people who are referred to as wizards or magicians, strictly based on their demonstration of skill. We certainly have heard basketball players be referred to as wizards on the court. And I don't think this is a misnomer. I don't think this is something that they shouldn't be doing, keeping the magic from the skill, it's just skill, blah, blah. I'm saying that certain kinds of skill, skill that seems to, if most of us can do something like this and these other people can do something like this at this other level, it seems like magic. And I think that's fair, I think that's cool. I think the word magic can mean a lot of different kinds of things. And so when I do some flourishes for people, um, you know, I don't think, traditionally people think, well, okay, that's skill and that's cool, or hey, don't do that, you're revealing you've got slights and it's not real magic, there's that issue too. But I also think there's a third thing that should be added in this conversation, this uh, thinking, the psychology, uh, ultimately the psychology of, of showing your skill and flourishes, is that past a certain point, being able to do some really messed up stuff is magical. It's not just a demonstration of skill, it's magic. So for me, these two, I mean, the coin roll is a classic thing. And you'll see people even in movies and stuff who can barely do it. And it's, it's amazing how shoddily and, and slowly and labored you can do this and people are still very impressed. Let alone if you're a psychopath like me and put in decades of your life where you can do it smoothly and quickly on both hands. Ta-da! Uh, people really, and especially what I love to do is I like to show, do these flourishes, and I've mentioned this before on the channel, in a way like I'm not even trying. Now you can go too far with it where no one even notices it. Hey, how you doing here? But you know, it's like, well, what was that? You know. So, but on the other hand, to kind of go, you know, hey guys, how you doing tonight? Huh? Easy, girls. Easy. That's just tragic. I mean, that's just a psychotic shut-in does that. So you have to find that style and how to how to share your skill. But you do a little bit of this or this four coin roll down, and it does go a long way towards establishing as somebody uh, who is in. A, you're not Uncle Harry with another card trick. You're on that whole other level. And so, from a commercial point of view, let alone from uh, even just as a student of sleight of hand, just in the learning, the relationship you develop between yourself and the items, I think has a lot of long-term value as well. So to get to this point, you're not gonna do it in minutes, and you're not gonna do it in hours. Okay, I don't even think you're gonna get there in days, even though you might think so. And I'm not showing you this. Hopefully I do enough uh, self-effacing comments that you guys realize that I don't go to bed at night sleeping soundly because I got my coin roll down. I just wanna show you that you can get a good clip on it, you can get it nice and magical and all these kinds of things, but it's gonna take a lot of work. The cool thing is once you have it down, especially if you can do it smoothly and relatively briskly, you're gonna have something that very, relatively few people on the entire planet can even do, which I think is pretty cool. Now, my first bit of advice to you to learn this move is to get rid of quarters and half dollars. Crazy as it sounds, when I was first learning this, years and years ago, I used a silver dollar and I found that a larger coin, and you know, if you find the largest coin you can, a larger coin seemed to help me get there faster. Okay, number one. Number two is, this is the biggest problem I see even on YouTube, a whole bunch of people teach the coin roll and they make it much harder than it has to be and much less controlled than it has to be because they've got the fingers out like this or like this. What you wanna do is a loose fist. Start with a loose fist, okay? The coin is held here. I push it over and I'm gonna release with my thumb so it can fall down. And learn this like this, go slowly, okay? It's now flat on my first finger. I raise just the middle finger, okay? We've all done that before. And you pull down, okay? There's no magic secret to this. It's exactly what you'd think it would be. But you start very slowly. Um, for certain TV shoots and commercials I've practiced and got it down with a finger ring or bottle cap, but then 24 hours later I can no longer do it with that. Now, from this point, here's the easiest thing to do, is you scooch that shimmy, 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 get it down until about a third of the coin, that's not enough, about a third of the coin is showing through the fingers. Then, here's the exposed view. My thumb is gonna come down 
and I'm gonna go to the left side of the coin and pull it in, okay? So this, 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 I'm gonna go down. And what I do, some people, very rare, turn their hands over and they can roll it with the palm up. I am not that good. What I do is I basically get the coin on the ball of the thumb, move it along to the left, and repeat. And I urge again and again on this channel, you know, you've heard the expression, you have to walk before you run. In this case, you have to crawl before you can walk to the stairs and fall down the stairs and die, okay? So it takes time, okay? And that's literally it. Just on the hand, let go. Give my one piece of advice for you is to get the pieces here. I mean, not one piece of advice, another piece. Get the pieces, don't try. So it's on my first finger, I've got control of it. I'm gonna pull it down, let it come on top of the second finger. I still have control of it. Down, up, and down, okay? Then pull it down into the hand, okay? And you're gonna to have to learn the weight. You have to learn how to, uh, you know, it's amazing the details here, because you have to widen the fingers enough, not that it falls, but that it slides, and the thumb can get purchase on it. Then bring it around below and up like this. Now, once you get this down, and you know, it's gonna be slow. Don't rush this, it's gonna be slow. But avoid getting, see now, I'm not doing a balancing act, okay? I have control on it. As soon as you find yourself doing this kind of thing, eh, 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 like this, like this, now you're getting into balancing act, you're making it harder for yourself. Notice too, you don't want it near the knuckles, uh, this and these knuckles. You want it closer to the, you want it as tight up against in here, because this is where you get control. It's as soon as you start to move it from here to trying to do it more for, for now you're gonna get in the balancing act. It's gonna get trickier, all right? Now, once you get this down, okay, you'll find, the nice thing is, you'll gain the control with the bigger coin. Then when you move to smaller coins, I've done this with a quarter, with a dime, a penny. I did it once with a quark. Um, and then once you get that down, joke for four people, and one of them is not me. Uh, once you get it down, of course, then you can do stuff where you roll from one onto the other. This is an old style thing. I remember an old Houdini poster where I, I, he, he'd do all this crazy stuff by rolling it. And I've played with it before, and I'm sure I'm gonna mess it up here on camera, where you get two coins. What I do like is the symmetry of the double coin. Now, if you're gonna take two coins out of your pockets, do this and then do a trick with one coin, I'd say it's a bit corny or something. Coiny, uh, but if you're gonna do a trick with two coins, 10 kai pennies or something like that, and you take these two coins out, and for just a second, have them both going down your hands or cross your arms, but you start getting into a Vegas style. Anyway, that is uh, the one coin coin roll or two coin coin roll, a beautiful move. Uh, and I do think, people ask me sometimes, is that, is that something you do in the morning to sort of exercise your hands and stuff and get them ready for sleight of hand? And I'm not certain, but I, I, it certainly can't hurt when it comes to warming up your hands. The four coin roll down. Now, is this harder than a one coin roll? I'm not sure, it probably depends. I think I ended up spending pretty much the same time on both uh, different uh, coin flourishes. Um, I think they're beautiful in different ways. Uh, just expect this to take a long, long time. Something you work on, you know, like a lot of sleight of hand magicians, there's stuff we're sort of working on on one level and then there's stuff we're working on knowing it's gonna take a long time to get it down. So we start with the four coins held between the thumb and first finger. I want you to notice that they're not at the tips. Okay, it's not at the very tip, nor is it way down. Somewhere in the middle, really on the fleshy parts of the fingers, okay? I'm gonna start by bringing the tip of my, of my middle finger up until it touches against the thumb. So step one, up. And my thumb and first finger now are gonna to work to peel off. Your focus is not on the stack, it's on the top coin that gets peeled off between the first finger and thumb. Like that, okay? So I'm here. The middle finger comes in, right thumb rolls the coin off. 
and then rolling the coin off. Now maybe you're gonna find in your hand it's more about the left middle finger coming up, grabbing the three, and going off with those. But I find really it's more about psychologically, at least even though maybe it amounts to the same thing, it's more about the thumb and first finger rolling that first coin off the stack. As soon as your stack starts to slip, stop. There's no point in going further. It gets worse and worse as it goes down the line. You need the whole thing to remain pretty straight, okay? I'm here, I'm there. Another tip too, you will find rather than trying to work it with your fingertips towards the ceiling, if you do the whole thing on the side, I wanna make sure you have a good shot here. I'm gonna make it hard for Chris. I apologize if I'm moving around and he has to readjust, doing my best here. But you will find by keeping the coins uh, perpendicular to the floor, you will have more control on the stack than if the whole stack is wanting to go uh, parallel to the floor, okay? So step one, peeling off the first coin. Let me readjust here. Step two is similar. You're gonna bring, uh, whereas before you brought this up, you're gonna bring this coin uh, finger over here and you're gonna roll off the bottom coin of the stack. The bottom with the knuckle of the first finger is gonna roll the bottom coin off. That's two, okay? Then the pinky is gonna come up. Let's see here. It's over, you're gonna, and there's this weird, now you're balancing these two. There's this weird moment where all the knuckles seem to line up and you're just thinking, I don't wanna cross the streams. So you're here like this and you wanna watch yourself because the finger nail is not gonna get, get you purchased. It's the side of the pinky. You're here and it's now gonna roll the top coin off. Okay. Let's do a little more, let's just speed up a little bit. Here, there's one, two, three and four. And for all you freaks out there uh, who like me want to learn all this advanced crazy sleight of hand, of course, InsideDeception.com, my training site, got a whole, got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos all involving got a whole sleight of hand lounge. It's a lounge called the SOH Lounge. The only thing focusing on there are advanced level card and coin and other stuff slights. Uh, then there are a whole bunch of tricks, hundreds of tricks that involve all this next level sleight of hand as well. Check it out, InsideDeception.com. There's a uh, really old Elton John song, a uh, musician, for those who have never heard of Elton John, um, called The Pinball Wizard. That's not the Elton John, it's the Guess Who. Jesus, why am I thinking anybody? Okay. It's the Who, <laughs> fuck not the Guess Who. Look at this, you're here, man. Holy <laughs> Yikes.